Given a pattern like this, can you work out how many matchsticks you'd need? Well, for the first couple, it's quite easy because you can just count them. There's four matches for the first pattern. You'd think there maybe would be eight for the second one, but they share one. So really it's only three more, which gives us seven. And for the third pattern, we'd need three more, which gives us ten. Now, we don't have a picture of the fourth pattern, but you might be able to predict that with three more matches on the end, it would make 13. But if we just said that the pattern is going up by three each time, it's going to be a bit tricky to work out how many matches you'd need for the 98th pattern. We need a better strategy. So we can consider what's going on with our pattern. As the pattern number increases by 1, the number of matches increases by 3. It's 3 times the number of the pattern gives us the number of the matches. So 3 times pattern 1 would give us 3, but we see that we're 1 short. We haven't considered the match that was at the start. So we'll also need to add 1 onto the end. And this will help us to work out 98. In fact, it will help us to work out any number of patterns in this sequence. And we can use a computer to work that out. Here's a function machine. It takes inputs, does some calculations and produces outputs. At the moment, the inputs and the outputs are the same because we haven't given it an instruction. But if we use our instruction for our matchstick pattern, we can multiply by 3 and then add 1 we should get the same outputs that we worked out over here. And we can change the inputs to produce the outputs. But how would you make your own function machine? Well, we can use some computer code to do that. We're going to use a programming language called Python at trinket.io. When you go there, you can log in and sign in with your school Google account. and then create a new trinket, and we're going to use Python. So we need to make some inputs. Our input was the number of the pattern, which we can call n for short. And we'll make that equal to an input that we type in. And to be a bit more helpful, we can add some text to tell the user what to do. And we also need some output. And we can print what the input was to start with. And when we run it, we can type in a pattern number and it will print it. But again, it's not very helpful because it's just outputting the input. So we need to do a calculation in between. We want the number of matches. And we know that the number of matches is three times and in Python, times is shown with an asterisk, the number of the input, plus 1, and then print the output. This time when we press run, we can type in pattern number 3, but oh no, we get an error, because computers do exactly what you tell them to do. In this case, the error is because we can type anything into the input, and it could be text, it could be a number, uh, but the computer doesn't know. It's expecting, though, to receive an integer. So we'll have to tell the computer that we want to input an integer by typing int and putting the brackets around the input. And this time when we run it and type in 3, we should get 10, which is the number of matches for pattern number 3. But of course, we could type anything in there, including 98. And it tells us that we need 295 matches. To save your code, click on Untitled and give it a name.
and press save. Once you've saved your code, you can copy the web address to submit to your teacher or to share with someone else. So far our code only calculates one pattern at a time, but we can get the computer to calculate the whole table of values at once. To do this we're going to need to repeat the calculation for as many times as we want to calculate. We're going to create a loop. So for each pattern number in this range, starting from 1 and going up to 10, we want to do these calculations. The number of matchsticks is equal to 3 times n plus 1, same as before. And we want to print the output to the screen. And for our table of values, we want to know the pattern number as well as the number of matchsticks. And we can press run to try that. And we can see that we have the same table of values as we saw in our matchstick patterns. But you might have noticed that it stops at 9. The range starts at 1, it goes up to 10, but it doesn't include 10. Of course we can also extend our range to include our 98 as well. In a fraction of a second, the whole table of values is calculated including 98 and 295. Because computers do exactly what you tell them to do, be careful when you're coding to make sure your code is correct. For the for loop, notice that there is a colon after that loop instruction, and afterwards, pressing enter added some spaces before the next lines. They're indented to show that we want to repeat lines 2 and 3 the 99 times. We can even do things like tell the code to go up by 2 each time it goes through the loop. And when we run this, the output calculates the number of matches for all the odd numbered patterns. So now try it yourself. You can come up with your code for some other matchstick patterns. Or maybe you can write some code to print the times tables.